I love Ace Combat 7. Usually. I know it's unrealistic, so those of you who play DCS can put your pitchforks down. I don't care how realistic your game is. At the end of a long day, I want to clap a fictional fighter plane flown by an old dude with my beautiful F-15C and a cool livery, alright? I like the unrealism in this game, so shut. Before I get too angry, I should probably get to the point. That, of course, being the sheer magnitude of ridiculousness that makes this story what it is. How can a story that seems unreasonably complicated work? Well, first let me address the Morgan in the hangar. I'm biased. I grew up around fighter jets, especially F-15s, and I love military aviation. I also grew up around Ace Combat itself, so I do try to defend these games. My proof that I'm not too biased is that I don't defend the storytelling of Ace Combat 6. Although, to be fair, 6 is some of the best gameplay in the entire series. Also, I want to make this clear. This is not a plot summary. I'm talking about a handful of writing mechanics and bringing up some relevant plot moments as demonstrations, but I'm not going to summarize the plot in its entirety in this video. If there's one thing you can always expect from an Ace Combat game, is that the characters will be distinct. It's an impressive feat when you consider that 95% of what you know about them is a static -y voice on the radio, and the other 5% is probably just what plane they fly. Cutscenes add a lot to them, sure, but I think overall the gameplay conversations have the strongest writing. That, or I'm too busy dodging missiles to really take apart the drama around me as closely as I scrutinize the cutscenes. Take the various AWACs in the game, specifically Skykeeper, Bandog, and Longcaster. They all fulfill the same practical role in the game, friendly AWACs, but they have distinct personalities. We don't see Skykeeper that much in the game, but we still know that he's fiercely loyal to Osea, but also to former President Harling. Bandog is cynical, and at first it seems like it's only because he's stuck working with a penal unit. He even seems to care at least a little about the 444 pilots as missions progress. Yet, it's clear from how he interacts with Mackenzie that he actually craves power and recognition. He loves ordering pilots around, and he brown noses Mackenzie annoyingly hard. When Trigger is finally considered innocent, both Mackenzie and Bandog try to win his favors before ultimately throwing him under the bus the moment Cyclops Squadron shows up. Longcaster is friendly, but professional. He gets the job done and looks out for the pilots in his charge, but the thing most people remember about him is his obsession with food. You get the impression that he really believes he's fighting for something larger than himself. It even keeps his level-headedness throughout the later portions of the game, when most of the world fell into chaos. My point in talking about them is that they are all functionally the same character for gameplay. They take turns being the voice that narrates the mission and orientates you on your surroundings. Outside of function, they are different characters to match the attitudes of each section of the game. You never see a single one of them, so their entire character has to be portrayed by their voice. But it works. Skykeeper is the stern patriot who reinforces the political tension of the game's start. Bandog is the power-hungry bully with a god complex to show the imperfect nature of Osea. Longcaster is the humble hero who wants to do his part in the ending of the war for the final part of the game. There's a similar situation with the other pilots in the game, but I won't go through them all. All I need to make clear is that most of the characters are only known by their voice, and yet they are mostly distinct from each other. While some of them are a little too trope-y, there's also just classic ace combat, so my bar of expectations is lower. Yes, I know Strange Rail isn't technically the official name because it comes from a misreading of the Ace Combat 4 trailer. I counter that the name was used in a tweet, and that's official enough for me. Strange Rail as a world facilitates the absurdity of the story in a way that no other fictional world can. It's a world constantly at war, and thus every country has considerably refined their warfighting capabilities. Ace Combat 7's Arsenal Birds, as well as Hugin and Munin, Makes sense in Strange Rail thanks to Stonehenge, Excalibur, Chandelier, Megalith, and so on from previous games. The world has plenty of room to up the ante every time and still have it aesthetically fit. Ace Combat 7 in particular ponders the morality of drones throughout the entire game through the aforementioned Arsenal Birds, Hugin, and Munin, and the thousands of random drones. The UAVs can take out their targets efficiently with zero civilian casualties and without the risk of sending more Rusian pilots into danger than necessary. Yet, that so-called clean perception allowed the Erusian radicals to the public support they needed to increase the scope of the war. Ultimately, the war grew so far out of control that civilians were starting to get killed, and the Erusians had to send personnel anyway, 
rendering most of the benefits provided by the drones no longer worthwhile. Gruzia mainly kept the fighting going because of the sunk cost fallacy afterwards, because they believed that they could just keep manufacturing drones, even though the entire world had almost collapsed at that point. At the end of the day, that's the magic of Strange Reel. It's absurd and dramatic, but there is still a traceable line of cause and effect that underlines its own plausibility. Very little is strictly realistic to our world, but it is always realistic for its own established rules and expectations. The plot may be absurd, but it does feature some relatively straightforward elements that keep it together. For example, while every part of a story is important, and the writing process for each should be respected, the opening of a story in particular has a lot of critical work that it needs to do in order for the rest of the story to have a chance of surviving. The opening needs to introduce the world, the characters, the conflict, and the adversary. Additionally, the opening needs to establish the general tone of the story, the rules that will dictate the world, and the foundation the threads of the story will return to. An opening with all of that will check the boxes, but if the opening is to be received well, it needs to do all of that, but also work efficiently and subtly. Ace Combat 7's opening does rather well, is what I would say if it wasn't for Avril Mead's opening cutscene. Let's just ignore that, we don't need it, and frankly, I always forget it exists. Anyway, after that cutscene, the opening suddenly works. Classic Ace Combat mission briefing to explain the mission may technically be telling instead of showing, but it is a game, and it serves the important function of telling the player what they need to do along with story elements, so I give it a pass. The mission tutorializes flying, but also establishes the personalities of the early characters, which side of the war you're on, and who you're fighting. The next cutscene fills in the gaps. That's good. Maybe it's not perfect, but it functions. The rest of the plot is very similar. There are awkward moments, but the story does work. A lot of the plot relies on nuance, and the story makes risky moves that I think work in its favor. Gerusia is split into factions, but you both help and fight against all of them depending on the situation. Osia aren't at fault for the war, but the practices are harsh and overreaching, like the usage of penal units as bait. Even the main personal protagonists, Mihai and Dr. Schroeder, are sympathetic by the end. The former just wanted to keep flying in his old age, and the latter thought he had to do it for honor of his nation. gone now. Rather than surrender to its enemy, Belka detonated seven nuclear weapons on its own soil. My people scattered around the globe, living in the shadows of other countries. We had a new purpose, to breed wars. The theory was that through war, we could achieve our destiny and our revenge. So, this place runs on solar power that the space elevator generates, right? How about the others? We can destroy the space elevator and cut the power to them. First things first, let's take this one out. I'll show you which locations to target. Both realized the drones were a bad direction to go, and turned against them later. Which brings me to the other specific section I wanted to dissect a little, the ending. The conclusion of a story needs to tie up all loose ends and answer any questions that still remain indebted to the reader. Some might argue that a sequel might need the loose ends and the open questions, but I'd argue back that sequels are still the same story, just a different chapter. So whenever your series ends is the real conclusion that needs to wrap everything up. Others will inevitably argue about specific stories that intentionally leave the reader room for open interpretation, but that has to be done perfectly to work and it's not the kind of story I'm talking about. Ace Combat 7 wraps up nicely. The various factions at war all dislike each other, but they all agree that they don't dislike each other enough to justify fighting, especially since modern civilization has almost entirely collapsed into anarchy by this point. Instead, they consolidate their resources to fight against the Arusian radicals in order to stop the war. Functionally, that shrinks the list of antagonists down and firmly answers the question on what the real enemy is. The drones. Once they are all defeated, it makes sense that the war comes to a conclusion, because there is nobody left willing to fight. 
In the words of Knocker, I said what I have to say. I just wanted to do a short video that explains why I think the story of Ace Combat 7 is perfectly serviceable for the game. If I get the Xenia emulator to work well enough without the black triangles or weird audio glitches, I'll make a similar video on why I don't think Ace Combat 6's story is as strong. Or I'll do the video anyway and embrace the jankiness of emulation. I'm not sure how to sign off, so... bye.